when my sailing days are over and I sail the seas no more, I shall build myself a refuge by the ocean's murmuring shore. As I watch the foaming breakers, when the tide comes rushing in, I will contemplate my lifetime with its virtues and its sins. Where the azure of the heavens meets the undulating blue, where the sweeping, soaring seagull flies its endless quest for food. It is there that I would rest when my work on earth is done at the endless blue horizon neath the crimson setting sun. David Block. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Coffee, Tea, and Crime. This is Dana, and in today's episode, JR and I will be in sunny Florida for a recently solved cold case murder and a possible link to an unsolved murder in Hawaii. This is Death by Sea and Air, the murders of Pamela Kahanis and Kathy Hicks. The Orlando Naval Training Center in Orlando, Florida was first commissioned on July 1, 1968. It was established to enhance the manpower training capabilities of the United States Navy. In 1973, Orlando became the sole site of recruit training for enlisted women. Fast forward 11 years. It was Friday, August 3, 1984. Pamela Kahanis, a former resident of Stillwater, Minnesota, graduated from the training center. She was now a full-fledged sailor in the United States Navy. She had her whole life in front of her all 36 hours of it. She spent Saturday the 4th shopping at the Fashion Square Mall where she was seen walking from store to store between 11 in the morning to almost 3 p.m. After that, we know she drove to a nearby Kmart where a printed receipt indicated she made a purchase at 318 that evening. Some three hours later, she is seen between 6.30 and 7 p.m. walking with an unidentified male at the training center. We can only assume it was a fellow shipmate since there was no record found of a visitor pass being issued at Building 111 near the front gate at the intersection of Bennett and Corinne. Between 6 and 8 p.m., Pamela and the unidentified male were seen at the Mariners Club, a lounge and bar on the Navy campus. An unconfirmed sighting had placed Pamela at an ABC liquor store somewhere near Old 1792 South Orlando Drive and 27th Street in Sanford sometime around 8 p.m. It was now August 5th and a generic receipt later recovered at the crime scene showed a purchase at 1.09 a.m. of Asian food. The receipt did not indicate the name of the restaurant or its address. A later autopsy of Pamela showed she had consumed some type of Asian cuisine. At 7.05 a.m. on the 5th, a motorist saw a body lying in the yard of a vacant house at 2918 Old State Route 46 in Sanford. Pamela is believed to have been killed sometime after 1 a.m. She was partially clothed and savagely beaten. The cause of death was strangulation. Her clothes were found close to the body, along with the shopping bags and items purchased from Kmart and Fashion Square Mall, as well as the Chinese takeout carton and receipt. Approximately $100 was found in her pocket. Investigators believe that she had not been killed at the location she was found. Now, folks, 31 years went by. 31 years of the family not knowing who had killed their little girl. But in 2015, there was a break in the case. They had uh, DNA from the semen that was found on Pamela's underwear. Now obviously, back when this occurred in 1984, there wasn't any DNA. But now, 2015, it had reached such a point that they were able to submit Police were able to submit this DNA to a private forensic genealogy service. Now this company, GED Match, they looked at it and they said, okay, whoever this is, it's somebody with African ancestry. Three years later, 2018, They took that DNA sample. They gave it to Parabon Labs. 
they asked them to create an unknown suspect family tree. And I'm not even going to try to get into how all that works because that's way beyond my pay grade. But these very intelligent people are able to map out the family tree. And from that, they came up with a name. And that name was Thomas Garner. So now a year later, 2019, police are following Garner around. They're waiting for him to discard, throw away something that they can get DNA off of. So they watch him and he throws some items in the trash at his apartment complex. That included a piece of used dental floss, a cigarette butt, and a cotton swab. So the officers do their little trash pickup and they send those items off to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Laboratory for testing. The lab comes back and says we've got a 100% match to the DNA found on the victim's underwear. Now according to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Laboratory, they said the odds of the DNA belonging to anyone other than Garner was 700 billion to one. So now it's March 13, 2019, and the police snatch up Garner. And they bring him down to the station and they start questioning him. Now, his initial response is he doesn't know who she is. He's never heard Pamela Kahanis. So Garner denies he knows Pamela. Now, during this interview, and by the way, Garner was at the base at that time. He was in the Navy. He says he wouldn't date recruits during his Naval service and that he had never had sex with a white woman. So now Garner's put on trial and he's charged with first-degree murder for beating and strangling and raping Pamela Kahanis in 1984. Now when the trial's finally all said and done, he's found guilty. A little bit of the backstory, Garner was a dental hygienist for the Navy. That's what he was doing on the base. Now, of course, when he was being interviewed by the police, he had denied knowing Pamela and said he wouldn't have sex with a white woman. Now, during the trial, that story changed. and He said he might have had casual sex with her, but he didn't remember. He said he was pretty promiscuous back then. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Garner, things just got worse for him because he got hit with an indictment from the great state of Hawaii. And that indictment was for second-degree murder in the rape and strangulation death of a woman in Hawaii. Same M.O. Now, two years before Pamela Kahanis was beaten, strangled, raped, murdered in Florida, Kathy Hicks, 25-year-old female, was in Hawaii. She was there from the great state of Georgia. Her company, Delta Airlines, was participating in a softball tournament. Now, initially, she had just disappeared. And she had last been seen with a male black, 5'11", 6 foot, 150, 160 pounds, clean cut. So when she got to Hawaii, she was staying at the Ilikai Hotel. Now, she'd last been seen around 1.30 in the morning on September 19th with a fella named Tommy. Now, according to two of Miss Hicks's co-workers, she'd been with this Tommy fella on the elevator last time they'd saw him. 
They were coming from the 24th floor to the hotel lobby. And they saw Miss Hicks and Tommy go towards the pool, and they went with some other friends to a nearby club. So she's missing. Now, about eight, nine hours later, her body is found around 10 a.m. by two joggers. Now, she was found up what they refer to as the hills, stand on the island of Oahu. The body was near a pumping station, near a water reservoir, New Ani Pala Drive. Honolulu police, they had a sketch of the suspect. They had a first name. Don't even know if that was a real name. Now, thankfully, they kept the victim's clothing because, folks, it's 1982. Same issue they had in Pamela's case. Is, this is two years before she dies. There's no DNA. But they kept all that evidence. And they're able to get DNA from her underwear, Miss Hicks. So they get a they get a hit on Garner because the MO and everything is as close as it is. And yes, Garner had been in Hawaii at that time. So they do a comparison and it is a match. The prosecutor there says even though Garner's already locked up for life in Florida, nah, it doesn't make any difference. A lot of things could happen. Case could get overturned, he could get released. So they indict him. Now I do not have any information on if and when that trial is going to begin. If and when they have his trial, though, I'll come back and put something in the description of this episode. Let you know what happened with it. But you know as well as I do if the DNA evidence certainly going to be found guilty because it's kind of hard to deny that. It's amazing you can have almost 40 years go by and you can solve the murders of two young ladies. Of course, what's scary is you wonder how many other bodies there are that's attached to him that we don't know about. Well, I'll leave us with a quote from one of my favorite movies. I beg pardon? I beg pardon? What are you so polite about? For the same reason you are not. It's the way I was brought up. And folks, that'll do it for another episode of Coffee, Tea, and Crime. Be sure and holler at us, let you know what you think about the case in the comments below. And if you think of another case you'd like us to do, just be sure and holler. Put it down there for us. Appreciate y'all tuning in.